welcome to our new episode of our podcast, European Stories from a Union of Volunteers. Today I'm here with Hugo, also from Portugal. I volunteered in Italy and he volunteered in France, if I'm not mistaken. Hello. Yes, I volunteer in the south of France, in the fantastic region of Camargue. Okay, nice. In today's podcast, we're talking about uh, what work we actually ended up doing. And at first, I would like to ask you the reasons why you applied to go there and what were the expectations that you had before? Did anything change from what you expected? Was it different, better, worse? How was it? Actually, my story is very related to this question because uh, when I finished my master in ecology, um, I didn't have any opportunity in my field. And I saw an opportunity to work on a hotel and they were requesting a, a biologist. So it was very strange. I went and they didn't need a biologist at, at all. They were just um, wanting for some uh, presentations at Wednesdays. But I was mostly doing hotel work, uh, recessionism, uh, helping with the breakfast and things like that. So I started searching for other opportunities. That's when I saw the volunteering opportunity in France. And they were looking for someone to work in scientific research to help with the field data collection and things like that. And I was again worried. Hmm. Is it really like this or it will be something completely different? It will be more environmental education or something like that. But I decided to go. I was a little worried. And after three days, I was completely in love with the experience. It was really like the Sunday morning shows of the nature, like Discovery Channel and BBC. It was really amazing. Okay. So the reason why you applied and your expectations were kind of aligned and what you got from your experience was more or less what you expect, right? It was much better. I was super worried and was expecting not a lot. And I couldn't imagine it would be so good. That also applies to me 100%. Uh, the reason why I went to Italy was because I had done my Erasmus there and I wanted to leave Portugal. And I applied for one position that was about international cooperation. But that's a really vague word. And for me, what I pictured myself doing was work mostly in the office, uh, writing projects. And we, my association also had um, a fundraising campaign during uh, Christmas. So that was most of what I knew back then. And I was thinking, okay, this is just one reason for me to leave Portugal and go to the country that I love. And actually, it ended up being so much more. And the experience was so much bigger than the reason why I decided to take it. Yeah, I, I don't know if you have the same uh, thought, but I think people in Portugal usually see a volunteer as a waste of time or uh, as um, people taking advantage of you. So I think there's a common uh, uh, feeling of worry when the Portuguese want to do volunteer. And it's really nothing like that. It's really a discovering of a new world of um, enlarging your horizons and um, yeah i think it's really a fantastic experience no yes i understand that people may think that uh, volunteering is not real work but i can guarantee you and everyone who's listening that the year that i had a volunteering was uh, it didn't feel like i was volunteering and it, with this type of esc projects funded by the um, european union you are also paid you're not working for free you have your way of sustaining yourself and it gives you so much. Most people don't uh, understand how much it can actually give you. So I would like to um, continue and move on with what was the type of integration together with your coordinators, the other volunteers, the place where you were staying? Was there a moment where you like started getting to feel more at home? Actually, I was living very close to the natural reserve and uh, we were in a private property that was very big and dedicated to the protection of the wildlife as well. Mm -hmm. So we were living in the middle of nowhere and uh, all the volunteers, uh, even French volunteers or French students and uh, international students were living together. So I had a lot of opportunities to integrate with uh, people there, uh, not that much with the uh, locals, but with the uh, people at the facilities. And uh, at first it was a little hard because it was mostly French 
and they don't really like speaking English. Yeah. And uh, they were afraid of uh, speaking English with me. That I think it's uh, everyone is afraid. I don't know why. And uh, I noticed that I was part of the group mm -hmm. because we every week we did a um, common dinner where people would uh, cook traditional dishes from their region or from their country. And we also do um, thematic parties where we would dress up. And uh, at the first days, I was feeling out of place, mostly because of the French. After three days, when I went to the field to see the birds and to see the wildlife, I felt completely in love. In that week, we had a thematic party and I, okay, this is a good place to be. I think I'll get along pretty well. Yeah, exactly. For me, we didn't make any thematic parties, but um, I think what helped me a lot was traveling through Italy and um, the trainings that um, we had. And as well, the work in itself and the atmosphere that I had uh, in the work, it was a really small association and I was just together with another volunteer, but everyone got along so well. We had our own tasks and the association was also working not only where we were staying, but also in the rest of Italy and in Africa. So it was uh, a cool way to, well, get to know other people and work beyond your region or the borders but in the the first month of working with my association i got very bored and i would like to talk about it uh so before i do that i would like to ask you if there were any tasks in your work that you find that were boring or that you didn't like at all and you just did it because you needed to do them but you would rather not have to do them in the first place okay that would be a question that depends on the time you would ask me okay because okay. Uh, one of my activities in the uh, winter was to go to the um, field to try to get some data but i would have to go very early mm -hmm. almost in the middle of the night and uh, I, would, I had to go through the water, through the vegetation. Sometimes it was very cold. And, um, I would have to stay still for three or four hours waiting for the birds. So it was not the best of times when the conditions were not that good. But as soon as the sun, I could see the sun and the sunlight, and I could see all the bird life around, everything would be worth it. Sometimes I couldn't see much, but and if you ask me, oh, I hate doing this, every time I would see the sunrise and all the wildlife, yeah, it made everything worth. Yeah. Well, for me, the thing I was thinking was in from September to uh, December, my association was mostly focused on our fundraising campaign where we, where we would um, wrap gifts in many shops in Italy, all over the country. And we would hire people to um, to do this work for us because we are uh, the association was very small and this is also a project that the association does to get people out of unemployment for the for the christmas period and also do a good thing that is fundraising and a way to sustain our projects during the year as well but in october for example it was so so boring because my job was just to call shops and ask them if they wanted to to have our free service uh, of uh, wrapping the gifts. And I would spend my days just calling shops and saying, Oh, buongiorno, sono José de la Associazione Guardavanti. Vorrei sapere se siete interessati al nostro servizio de gratuito per fare i pacchetti regali. And I still memorize this sentence because I said this every time. It's not something very rewarding because most of the shops would say no. And you feel like you're useless. But for me, the turning point regarding the Christmas campaign was when I went to a shop and I was there like selling our work and our projects and what and the association mostly. And it was such a great time to, to do fundraising. You deal with a lot of people, you learn a lot. And um, it also makes you more talkative, I would say. So even though there was like this negative side in the beginning, I think the, the takeaway is kind of what you just said, like, the start may be hard and not so pleasing, but then there will come a time where you see the sun rising or you do something more practical and everything is worth it and you really enjoy it in the end. I, I totally agree with you. The, I would like to ask you, uh, did you feel comfortable talking about uh, that with uh, your coordinator or uh, with your colleagues? 
did it help? Or uh, I think it's something important that sometimes the volunteers are not enjoying the activities that much, but it will help them if they talk with uh, colleagues or with their supervisors. Yeah, I did talk about uh, about that and they helped me see that that was not my job for the entire year or for until December. And they also, they changed kind of the, the way that I was doing this by making me do other things during the day and not just that, so that it would balance out my work day and it wouldn't be so boring. And in the end, even calling the shops became interesting. I would, uh, I mean, I memorized the sentence and I had fun saying it. Uh, most of the answers were not nice, but uh, I still had fun. I think it's also part of the way you you face the problem and the work that is helpful in dealing with it if you don't like it. But yeah, I did I did talk to them about that, and there was actually another moment during my volunteering that we were starting to have projects in the schools in Italy, and there was a change in director in our uh, in our association and they were discussing if we the volunteers were ready to go to the schools and to talk with the kids and so on and i misunderstood their conversation and uh, got that they wouldn't put us like going to the schools and meet the kids and do this cool project and i was so uh, sad and uh, i was talking with the the other volunteer and uh, one friend of ours and our coordinator overheard us and it was such a weird uh, moment. It didn't create some good atmosphere for the moment because we, I was talking about the situation without really confronting them about my feelings. But then you need to solve the problems. And if, you, if you're feeling bad about something that people are telling you to do or not to do, then I, the thing I would tell you to do is always talk to the people directly because it's only by doing that that you can solve it. And in the end, I went to the, to the schools and it was just me misunderstanding the conversation and they always wanted me to go to the schools. Yeah. I totally agree with your message that uh, we should talk it out and um, I'm happy it all worked out in the end for you. Yeah. So now I would like to ask you because going to the schools for me was really, really the best surprise I had in my project and I got so much from it. What was the activity that you did in your work uh, that you enjoyed the, mo enjoyed the most. Yeah, it's funny because it's the same activity I just talked that uh, uh -huh. to hate it sometimes. But, uh, everything that uh, involved going to the field and uh, when I succeed in uh, watching the birds or on collecting the data or, uh, for example, the uh, flamingo ringing. It's a day on the year that we do a big operation with the flamingo chicks. Uh, there's around 200 volunteers that go there and uh, we ring, we wait them, we take uh, all the measurements that will be needed for studying them and helping their conservation. And uh, my task in that day was to be in the middle of the flamingos. They were um, 1,200, something like that. And I need to catch them and give them to the people outside so they could do the measurements. I was so tired, but it was such a nice experience and the culmination of a year of work with the flamingos. And uh, then every time I would go to the field and uh, even uh, one month ago when I was in France, I could see uh, flamingos that I helped ring. So it's amazing to see where will they go and the life they will have and that I took part of it. And that's why you're called the Flamingo Boy, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did a, a video about my volunteer experience and I took a, a nice picture of a student uh, watching the flamingos. Like you, I also had uh, some contact with uh, children or students, helping them to understand uh, what we do and uh, why. And uh, yeah, I get, got to be known by the Flamingo Boy at youth events. <laughs> no, that's really cool. So to finish it up, I would like to ask you, what would you mention as something that the volunteering taught you in this year? And how do you think it was different from, let's say, a normal job? For me, the type of uh, volunteering was already a little different from the norm, I think. So very different from a normal job. Mm -hmm. But I think I can compare it to the university. I spent uh, six years in university doing a bachelor and a master's degree. And uh, I think I learned much more during my volunteer 
how to do science, how to be a good scientist, how to do conservation and all of that by actually being in the field, by actually taking part of the actions, then just being in a room do, doing theoretical study. So I think uh, doing volunteer, especially in a field you like, it um, makes you actually live the experience and uh, see if it's actually what you like or not and grow as a person and as a professional. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And what I would say volunteering taught me, uh, well, besides all the cool things about patience and uh, learning to work with other people and meeting new cultures, for me, the way that it was different from my, what I would picture of a normal job was how diverse it was. Because the work that I did and in the beginning was so much different from what I ended up doing when I finished the volunteering. Like it would be very rarely that I would be doing the same thing every day. So I would always change uh, things to do. And after the fundraising campaign, we started having all these different projects in different schools in the region of Lombardia. And it was incredibly great. I also I also helped like uh, write a project for um, other fundraisings. Um, to build a school in Africa. And everything that I ended up doing was very practical and with a clear result that you could see. And it also helped me to, um, to experience all these new things at the same time and with the same position as an, a volunteer. And people would normally expect that volunteers don't do anything. But I think it's a misconception and we end up doing more than we would think and what other people think as well. Right. Yeah, I I agree with that, and um, it's always great to meet uh, different volunteers and to learn all about the cool experience they do. They are so different and so great in their own way. So it's always a pleasure. Thank you for these beautiful words and for the time with the with you. This conversation was great. Thank you for the ones who were listening. See you on the next one. Bye.